Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Travellers, Season 3, Episode 9, it is called David. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. So, <laughs> well, actually before I even get to the big thing that I'm obviously going to want to talk about right away, is I just, I want to not pat ourselves in the back too much, I feel like between the two of us we like guessed a lot of things that might happen in this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you said there'd be a nuclear bomb that they have to deal with. I said there'd be more explosions. Um, I think there was something else that occurred to me in this episode. I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure I said that last time. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, but there was, there was another thing. There was, there was a few things as I was in my brain as I was watching this that were racking up. I was like, wait, we kind of said that. Oh, we kind of yeah, said that. But the, the thing is, we were going, oh, maybe this or that, not oh, all of it. <laughs> it was kind of the, uh, the black box thing. It wasn't exactly the black box, but we kind of get that scene. It was, yeah, yeah. It, it was essentially the same thing. Uh, so, David's alive! Excellent! Yeah. I'm happy! Can't see a Ray Palmer. I can't explain it, but why is he alive? And then they explain it, and then literally about five seconds later, he's in a room with a nuclear bomb. Oh shit, they're doing this to us again. Oh no, this one's slower. This one's more terrifying and heartbreaking. Oh, oh. It is <laughs> annoyingly impressive that they can make me, you know, mourn for a character last episode and go, right, yeah. that's it. He's dead. Uh, you know, uh, uh, give me a moment of relief <laughs> and go, maybe not. And then go through the entire episode going, oh, he's dying. It's happening. So, so, so the thing is, there's several moments in this episode where your heart sinks and obviously what one's kind of when he's in the room with the bomb, you're like, oh, maybe it'll just be a scene of them talking him through it and he'll, he'll pull it off. Because this is the thing. You're there going, well, the bomb's not going to go off. Yes. And you know, he, 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 we already had the fake out death, so, so we can't do that right away again, that's silly, right? Yeah. Uh, so that, that's going on, right? But it's the moment where the cutting the wires has not worked, and you just, you know, they just yell at him, David, pick it up, pick, pick the core up, and smash it as hard as you can. Yeah. And the moment they do that, because even before they react to it, you kind of know it in your gut that this was a suicidal moment. Yeah. This, this was sacrificial. He had to do this, but it was going to kill him. And your heart sinks. And then the other time where it sinks... I don't want to say more, because actually, no, it was probably more than that that scene, because that was the worst one, but... It's when... Because all the episodes, you're waiting for help, that someone might... You know, the director might send help to save him with, you know, future technology, with whatever. It's the moment a message comes through, because that's the moment, that's time of death, because we know he's not getting saved. I mean, it's not looking good before that. It's looking really bad before that, but that's I mean, the moment. you're like 99% sure that... Okay, though, this is this is not ending well. But there, hey, is no, there is no miracle. It looked bad last episode, and he woke up. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah, but this was worse because it had the goodbye, and yeah. you're like, no, that's had. it. But that that's the thing, though. That you can equally see them pulling out the no, the last minute, the last possible second help comes. Right, you know, the, the goodbyes are there to trick us. Other things have done it. I, I you know, I have. I, I, I'm kind of glad they don't because it always frustrates me a little when they do that. No, I'd have been thankful in this case. Uh, no, I, I was, I was. No, no, don't get me wrong. There's, there's, there, there's always oh relief. Oh, thank God, this character I like is still around. But every time they do it, where they go just, where they go so close to the wire, and then, and then hell arrives, it always feels a little bit TV cheap to me. I was still hoping for it. <laughs> I don't care about your stupid jadedness, right? I was hoping for it. All right, all right. And it didn't come. And it was the moment that the, the director, you know, sent the message through him, which obviously there's implications of Project Omega, right? Or Protocol, Protocol Omega. Yeah, yeah Pro Protocol Omega, which is what this final episode is called. Which right? is clearly a, a thing set in place. Yeah, yeah. It, it means something to all of them. They're, they're all, I mean, Marcy's crying her eyes out, but everyone else in the room. Uh, I guess it's not specifics, but obviously I think the, the implication is this is like the like a doomsday protocol. It's like, no, no, worst case scenario. Yeah, worst case scenario, whatever that, you know. Yeah, this is, you know, exactly. you know, all cards on the table, whatever it takes. Yeah. So, so that's rewind. So, so David wakes up, you're like, what, why, why is he up? What's going on? I mean, I'm happy. And part of me was thinking, is he already in the black box? Is this just like, you know. I thought that was what there was, because, um, because we see Marcy here you know, with the towel, you know, and then she's going to, and then, but we see it leave, and then we're with David, and he's there alive, and I'm like, this feels like a really weird edit. Yeah, the trick is, yeah, yeah. The, the trick is into thinking that you know he's in there, but it's not really. It's like, or it's earlier, or something. You know that there's times past, yeah. and 
And I, I love the moment where she like says, no, I need to talk to him. And she, 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 she turns on the comm and he's like, are you in my head? Am I dead? <laughs> What's happening? And she's like, no, I put an implant in you. It's just the comms. And, and later on, of course, she even gets something to you know, switch it so that it's talking to the whole team. Like, you're going to have to like switch it. Press this. Yeah. It's like, I thought that was a tumor, <laughs> Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> you told it was a cyst. Yeah. Really funny. Um, and I love that, you know, we're in this thing where he's in there with the bomb and he's still making me laugh the way that David always has, right? Yeah, like, the, there's the bit where she's like, does it hurt? And he looks down at all these bullet holes. He's like, not as much as I feel like it should. <laughs> and it's like, you know, nanites, you know. Because like, it, actually, at first I thought there wasn't even bullet holes. It obviously occurred to me that um, a lot of the blood was probably not his because he was holding blood bags. He was literally yeah. holding blood <laughs> when, when, when he got shot. Um, not that I thought the blood was bulletproof by any means, but it was just like, okay, that explains the blood splatter, but obviously then it's, it's nanites. Okay, fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming it was that the nanites that were in that blood yeah. got cut, you know, went into it, you know, through the bullet wound, went into yeah. it. Yeah. And to, to the show's credit, we've had nanites as a medical procedure since season one. This is not out of nowhere these nanites can do this. Oh, no, of course not. So it doesn't feel like, I, you know, if this was the first time we'd ever heard about them, It'd be like, all right. That's kind of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this has been something they've been using. And I love that she actually references, you know, later on when she's getting angry and she's like pleading with the camera at the director, you know, save him. You saved Mac when he should be dead after that plane crash. You saved, you know, other people. You've he, done this. It was, it was her, you know, with the reset. Yeah. And- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, no, like he just saved like 50,000 people. Save him, God damn it. Um, it actually reminded me of another show, which I won't, I won't mention for spoiler's sake, but it reminded me of a moment in another show. Um, have i seen this in the show no okay but it was it was a really heartbreaking scene everything with marcy refusing to leave his side the the eventual sort of you know goodbye in his head with all the characters i will say i am very glad that she got to be honest with him for at least a scene yeah before he died like her just openly admitting it and then like you know him getting to ask what the real names were and not wanting to know marcy's you know he makes fun of max and he's like no what no i don't know your name's marcy yeah, it's, a, it's a dumb name yeah that was really sweet uh, and she gets to just be honest, and he's like, talking about the future, and, and yeah, yeah. And you get even if they don't go through everything, you know he gets it, right? He's heard enough now where he's put it together. He knows that when she came back was when Marcy got well. He knows, you know, he's he's figured that out, um, which is oh a little reassuring. It's a little, just a little nice thing just before he goes. And what's funny is they eventually find Jeff right behind the wall. He's he's been kidnapped by the faction. He's you know front of the, the TV screen like we've seen before. Um, and we can get into some conspiracy theories about how maybe Zero Zero One's already put himself in Jeff's body or yeah, whatever. I'm so suspicious. Like, I know that it, it sounds like it's just crackpot at this point, right? Yeah, it is. But see, before we get to those crazy theories, though, just, let's just assume for a second that no, this is just Jeff it's as he just was. Jeff. Yeah. And he's been brought back because he's injured, and Carly's kind of happy that he's not dead, <laughs> right? I was waiting for a moment where Jeff noticed who was on the. Because the, the, he's on the other end of the room. He's, he's over too far away around the yeah. corner of the couch. I was hoping for him to see who was on the table. And I like to feel responsible because I'm not going to lie, part of me right now can't wait until Marcy finds out Jeff's the one that's caused this. That Jeff pulled him in. Yeah. And he's the reason he's, David's dead. Because part of me wants to see Marcy go apeshit on him. Carly's going to have to hold her back. She is, yeah. And it's going to be this weird idea, you know, Carly def- you know, defending Jeff. Yeah, but I just and Joe jo was kind of sweet as well. Obviously, it means the most that Car- yeah, that Marcy was, you know, there and she was having her moments with him. But even everyone there standing with with him and answering questions and just like everyone being kind of in awe of what he just did. Because you see the moment he touches it and then you know that's when we get the reactions where it's cutting around because because Yates doesn't get it. Yates is like, well, She's why like, is everyone I feel sad? Like I'm missing something. Yeah, um, but everyone is like mortified that David's just basically committed suicide. Um, uh, obviously again marcy's hurts the most but it, i think i think it has this extra effect where because everyone's reacting because they barely know david right and they're reacting like this and they know what he means to her and it just everything kind of pales up because of that so all of them getting to be honest and mac just saying screw it that last minute and saying yeah my real name's you know three four whatever <laughs> like, yeah um we're from the future things aren't so so good uh and I actually kind of liked the bit in his head where he's like, well, you know, it's our mess. Why shouldn't we clean it up? And he's like, you actually can. You know what the problems are. You're just not doing it. And I'm like, you know, that, that's oddly, you know, just true to life. <laughs> like, that's really sad. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the point, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get all, you know, 
uh, political here, but yeah, people denying that there's problems might be an issue in the future. <laughs> just, just, yeah. just a thought. Yeah. So I was, I was just a little side thing here. I was watching a uh, Netflix's The Fix. Yes. Which is basically it's a it's a panel show, and the idea is they take a huge like issue, mm-hmm. and then they come up with stupid comedy solutions. So one of them was global warming, right? Mm-hmm. And the solu- one of the stupid solutions was just everyone go vegan. But no one wants to go vegan because being vegan is kind of shit. <laughs> so we need to rebrand veganism and make it all right so that people don't hate it. That reminds me of an episode or two ago where Kat said, are you coming for dinner? Because I'm not eating vegan if I don't have to. <laughs> exactly. It's like, like, we all know, yeah, veganism is better. No, it is. Yeah, morality, but, but I still don't want to do it. Objectively, it's better for the planet, but I mean, there's a lot of other things we can do, though, and no one's willing to do them either. And they they, they don't ha- quite have the benefits of, of eating meat. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's something like, you know, veganism would reduce, uh, you know, uh, the, the carbon footprint by like 70%. Uh, it's actually kind of crazy. But it's like, but I want my bacon. <laughs> I want my steak. You're part of the problem, Connor. I am part of the problem. I'm admitting this. Part of the problem. Anyway, uh, so actually, I remember the other thing uh, that I... Uh, the, or you, no, I think it was me that said this. Uh, that all the nukes were the archive places. Because that seemed to one be of, the case. One of us definitely said that, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 think, it, yeah, I think it was me. Because uh, obviously at the start we see the, the, the Chinese team. Uh, yeah, and I, they, they I fail. don't remember well enough to dispute that it was you, but I'm also not willing to just give you the credit. Sorry, I'll take the credit. I'll, 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 t- I'll have to be given it. I'll just take it. It's fine. Uh, and and then, then the, the, you know, because there's one in London, then the one in China happens, and it was an hour later, and then there was a, another one in Russia. Because there's one point where oh, there's, there's one more in Russia. Oh, no, wait. No, there's not, boss. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, that that confused me a little bit, actually, because it was the idea they were all once an hour on the hour. Mm-hmm. Um, but that Russia went would have gone off at the same time as our one. I can't remember when they said had that part of the conversation. Are you sure that wasn't after they had David back at the? It might have been for, for some yeah. reason. I, I in my memory now it was while they were still just stood outside the archive. Um, but it may not have been. I may be. Yeah, just, I, like, I, I never questioned it at the time, which is why I'm I'm thinking that it wasn't. Well, this is the I did yeah. question it at the time. Okay, well, now I, I felt like the time had passed and it was it was okay, uh, which notably meant uh, that the archive is the last one left. So there was four. Yeah, Joe. You know, that's why I feel like it, there was no time passed because at, le- at the very least, Mac was stood there and someone gave him that information. Because it was what you know. He said, "This is the last one," while he was stood outside it and waiting for the team to come and secure it. Ah, oh, because he waited around for a while though for the, the yeah, travelers. Yeah, but, but what I'm thinking is, I couldn't remember who told him if it was like one of the other team members. They were all there still. The time hadn't passed. No, that no, was over the comms. It was over the comms. It was Philip okay. back at base. Okay, fair enough. Time may have passed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure time passed here. I don't think this is a this is actually a mistake. I think that you, I, I think you're overthinking this. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the other nukes have went off, uh, and their their the archives the last one. And this seemingly, from what we hear in this episode, is a backup because the faction have been erasing the actual data. So this is a way to back it up for the future. Yeah. Um, and the idea that it's actually passed down through generations, and that's how it's saved. Yeah, that that was interesting. You know, they give transfusions into people. Yeah. That you know they know you know okay their descendants will be alive. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, although I was actually upset that Mac never answered the question of how much data you could put into into blood. I, w- I wanted that figure. <laughs> I was like, come on, yeah. give me the, the terabytes. Come on. I, I did really appreciate Yates going. Why the hell are you telling me all this now? After you know all yeah. this secrecy, it's like, well, do you know what? Bigger problems right now. Yeah, yeah. Basically, he's like, yeah, we're at DefCon one or five. Is one the highest or is five highest? I feel like we had this discussion yeah. like three weeks ago. I and can never remember. I didn't bother to Google it. The, the, the point, the point is though, is and this this is kind of confirmed by the the, the, the protocol Omega by the end, right? Is that they, they, they can tell that things are getting bad, um, and it, you know by the end it can, it's confirmed that. So so you know that the mood's there for him to just make this call. DefCon one's the bad one. DefCon one's the bad one. All right, so it's counting down to one, right? Yeah. Five is normal. Five is normal. Okay, so it's not DefCon Five. Very few shows are DefCon Five because DefCon Five does not make for entertaining TV. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> so, so yeah. So they get a call, or Carly gets a call from Jeff, but she's not the parent because she's too busy helping with David. Um, 
And again, even she had a sweet moment with David, you know, too, when she's kind of like talking to him and she's, as he's cutting up his shirt and he's like, I like this shirt. <laughs> it's like, David, bigger fish to fry right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, Marcy's like, oh, okay, we need to get this shirt off you. And he's like, oh, yeah, I usually like it when she says that. <laughs> Yeah, that was just sweet. but she gets a call from Jeff eventually the voicemail and they go looking and they find him in the wall and yeah I think you know like d- did he get you know conscious transferred as the zero zero one now in Jeff yeah Which... I think I mean even if it's not you can question did they turn him because mm. you know we see them you know having a bit of a conversation it feels like a bit of a setup yeah in a lot of ways and I will say there is something genius to making you know Jeff as the body the main villain now because we already kind of hate him <laughs> yeah yeah we do it kind of works if, if he ends up being like the the the, the biggest baddest dude you know it, it kind of mm. works it does it does because um, I... now he's the face of the man who got david killed and he's the villain the whole time like yeah i, I just i don't know if it is or not though i can't make up my mind and if Carly does stick up for him, is this like him trying to like turn Carly without her realizing that that's what he, what he's doing? Or yeah, you know, like yeah, there's potential yeah. to go down that path. There uh, is. Speaking of paths, uh, Trevor uh, having a freeze in the middle of like telling David how to disarm the nuke. Oh, that moment! I went, oh no. Yeah, it was. It, it cut to Mac just like you know sharply looking at him like, oh no, this is bad. Uh, and it was only like a second, two seconds maybe, but it was you know it was enough yeah. to be like, oh shit. Yeah, and it happened again later. Yeah. Uh, just really small ones. I wonder if that's the thing that will be happening with inhibitors. It'll still happen, but it'll always just be like a quick little... At least for a if while. If it, well, this is the thing. It's, it's the option is, this is just it starting again. It's coming back in, right? And it's going to get worse and worse again. I don't think so. Okay. Well, because it's going to be more show. I just don't think... You know, I, don't, I don't think we're losing Trevor. Do you not? No. <laughs> that's oddly confident. No, I, I really don't think we're losing Trevor. Uh, not, not, not at the end of this season. Not like unless it's so gradual that it happens over the course of another season. Then sure, but I, I, it, it could be starting to come back and be very gradual. But I think it's more like not. The, the, this inhibitor will stop it from happening a lot, and it'll stop it from happening badly. But it'll still be these little hiccups. Fair enough. Fair enough. I did contemplate if it was still tied to Ilsa in some way, because obviously. Mm-hmm. Ilsa is being affected at the moment, and so, I yes. wondered if Ilsa not running the computations at every, you know, at every moment is, is what affects it. Um, I, I, I didn't know if it was live, you know, actually connected to Ilsa live the, the whole thing, time. I don't think it should be because Ilsa shouldn't have that. But I mean, yeah. So Ilsa, yeah, something weird's happened with Ilsa where it's it's getting a program downloaded and it's overwriting parts of her system. Uh, yeah, m- money on it being the director. <sighs> See, that's the thing. Grace, who gets called in by uh, Teslia, she like has an idea of what it might be, and she looks concerned. And if, you know that might be tied to the fact that it's, that it's Protocol Omega, right? Whatever it's, do- it's doing is tied to that, and that's why she kind of knows what it is. But part of me was also worried that if it's not the director, yeah. is this is this something worse because it's not the director? Mm, could be. Because uh, it's funny, I actually did predict there was going to be a scene with Marcy pleading with the director, but I thought she was going to go to the to Elsa and like, directly, like, you know, chat you, with oh, them. to get a response. Yeah, to get a response, to, like you know, demand action. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see that. I, I thought that was going to happen, but I mean, the, the moment you know, just looking at the camera, it actually worked for me. Uh, almost better in a way because it it felt more desperate. It was like just it's there. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think the the silence, because obviously. If there would have been silence when they stood at Ilsa, there's the expectation that it's choosing not to respond. Yeah, with this we don't know. It's just... If the response just... could come 10 minutes before he's supposed to die. We just don't yeah. know. Yeah, you know, exactly. We're, we're waiting around. She has to believe that help is coming and it's not. Um, and if anything's going to convince uh, Marcy that maybe they shouldn't trust the director... It's this. Yeah. This, this, this could be the thing. I don't yeah. know if we're I don't know if we're leading to a chasm in the team. I don't know if we're leading to a team that kind of operates independently from the traveler program in a way. Because part of me was thinking during this episode that because but, but at first when I thought the 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 Elsa was being taken over by a faction thing, right? I was thinking, 
What if the setup, the status quo change for next season is that our team have to hide from cameras and shit like like the faction do, where they yeah. have to go truly underground away from the director. Uh, yeah, I see that. Because not not that the director would be hunting them, but whatever's replaced the director. That communication. No, 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 no. Whatever's replaced the director. I'm thinking there was going to be a replacement, like an evil. Oh, thing. okay, I'm with you. Uh, if not, if not another AI, then something the faction is doing from the future. Right. Okay, I'm with you. I thought you meant like okay, no, the faction have got control at Ilsa, uh, you know, and, and that way, and they could track them quite easily with all the cameras. Oh, maybe, uh, yeah. I mean, that's maybe and, the simpler version of and, it. And more just, they have to go underground, and that cuts them off from the director because the director doesn't know where they are. I, I was just I was thinking, cause, because we've had status quo shifts to an extent for each new season, and I feel like that would be something you could do, whereas you, you take away... Because they've always had resources. They've always had this thing where they've got other traveller teams. They always get information from the director. The idea of cutting them off and for them having to just make decisions. Feels like an obvious choice. Yeah, it feels like an obvious path to go down in some way. Maybe not exactly what I said, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea of them being alone, though, definitely. I think a lot of whatever this next season will be depends on what Protocol Omega actually is. Of course, yes. Because we Um, don't know that. that. I mean, Protocol Omega could set up a new status quo that is in, planned in for right, yeah. yeah it's planned for by the director in this worst case scenario yeah uh so yeah okay. <laughs> it's open uh oh by the way i said another touch because one of the first things that we ever liked about uh, david and marcy was the joke about him thinking she was batgirl so calling back to that joke as he's like coming into the base for the first time it said oh this is the bat cave is that what the secret elevator is <laughs> takes out the cave to, to the other floors and they're like <laughs> No, no, this is it, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, do you know what I like about that? It's not that they're that high tech, it's just that from movies and TV, you expect all these ridiculous floors and all this stuff. Yeah. No, a couple of computer screens and a couple of computers is all you need, really. <laughs> like, that's all, all it takes. Pretty much. Pretty you know, much. And, 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 I, and in their case, a closet full of guns. I mean, obviously, Batman has tanks and shit and, you know, bat planes and whatnot, but. Yeah, yeah, I mean, appropriate things for their jobs. Yes. Uh, but they don't actually need that much. There's five of them, right? This is the, this is the extent of what they need. Hey, there's only one of Batman. There's only one of Batman. Well, that's true. Yeah, but he's Batman. God damn right, is. <laughs> but I just I, I like that. I, it was just it was like if anything that made me worry more than anything that we were calling back to an early joke between them. Yeah, it's never a good sign. It's one of those things where there's, there's almost this meta thing when you're watching a TV show when you've been watching enough like TV and movies for a long time. That there's these telltale signs that something's wrong, just based on the writing, not because the writing itself is telling you something's wrong, just because you know the signs that. Yeah, it was the same thing we were saying last episode about yeah. how you know they said you know they were saying that they love each other just out, out, out of nowhere. It was like oh god, bad things are going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So and and then, and then there's the, the double bluff. Like, are the writers aware that we're going to like at least not all, maybe not all of us, but some of us are going to immediately think that. Are they playing with that? I think they 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 got us by not having that be David's death at the end of the last episode yeah. and doing it here instead. Because obviously, you know, I said last time, it's like, God, we were worried about the one called David. Yeah. And then they threw us off with, with it being in the last one. No, the one, then, to, the one oh, to worry about, David yeah, yeah, the one to worry about was still the one called David. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that that yeah. is that is true. Um, and the fact that is, though, is that sometimes the best thing to do is to not try and play us. Because sometimes just letting it play out is the most surprising thing. Sometimes yeah. not swerving as as the as the mm, as definitely. the twist almost, um, because you're expecting the the, the twist. Uh, so and, it, it, and it, I think it's a bit balance. Um, you can do the obvious thing, you know. So yeah, you know, we we say oh we've, mm. we we mentioned uh, the side, you know, there's all these things that we said might happen in this episode, and a lot of them did. Oh yeah, none of that was disappointing. Not not no, one of them made me that, go oh they just did the thing I thought. <laughs> no, no, that's not a bad thing. That's because. The writing is established enough that we can follow the logic and understand the progression yeah. and see the potential ideas that can come from that, because it's you know well written. So doing the obvious thing is not necessarily bad if you do it well enough. Yeah, it, this even just did. I mean, I didn't even pat us in the back for this one because I thought it was so obvious. But we we, we said last episode, Marcy's got him bugged. We can she can track him. We said that's yeah. how she's going to find him, and sure enough. You know, yeah, it, it, yeah. natural like course. Like just yeah. like it's doing the obvious thing is fine if you can do the obvious thing well. Sure, yeah. it's it's when it becomes just cliche or you know just generic. That's when it's a problem. When you can still you know make it as emotional as this, you haven't got a problem. 
yeah, as, as long as the scenes have weight to them. Uh, that's yeah. all that really matters. Uh, and pretty much every game. scene in this episode did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. Uh, we even spoke about the, the scene where uh, Cat throws out Mac. Uh, and he tries to wriggle his way back at he's, he's trying to, I forgot one thing what were you doing and she's like you're not my husband leave yeah do you know this scene might have had the first instance of where I went mm, cat really oh really what it was when you know she's like oh there's there's a nuclear bomb you know they cancelled the evacuation and he's like yeah I was there you know I was on the team and she's like of course you were why are you doing that <laughs> I'm like the, he literally just stopped a nuclear, but well, not him on his own. But you know, he was part of that. I, I think you're reading this just slightly off. No, I get what it's supposed to be going for. It was just the way she was like, oh, you know, the, the, uh, like it was. She was resentful that he was there. No, it, it wasn't she, resentful. I, I think you're reading this a little bit. The, to, to me, that this this reads more t- like. Um... Do you remember issue one of Batman, the start of Rebirth, where the plane's going down and Batman's yeah. on the... He actually he uses a jetpack out of the Batmobile to get to the plane. And he's on the comms to Gordon. And he says to Gordon, I'm on the plane. And he goes, of course you are. <laughs> right? It kind of reads to me a little bit like that. Not not as... Obviously, it's a little bit different. But in the sense that she knows what he does and the kind of things that he gets up to, right? And yeah. he's got all this secret stuff that he's doing. Um, but I I didn't read it as oh look of course you were gonna do that I I think it's just like it's, it's adding more to the idea that he's got this secret life that, that who he is is not really who he was before that. no no I I understand all of this I think it just played weird for, for me at least okay <laughs> this, this moment it played like look I know you okay this this man is clearly not your husband you're you're not happy with him obviously but he did just like help stop a nuke a little bit of gratitude would not be amiss here. I don't know if gratitude's on the table. I, uh, sorry, this man just stopped my city being blown up. I'd be thankful. A man who's not really her husband's been having sex with her for a year. Well, yeah, okay, ignore all of that. No, you can't ignore all that. No, no okay. it doesn't matter what he just did. It doesn't matter what good thing he just did. Gratitude under no circumstances is on the table here. Gratitude for this instance? Yeah, it is. No, it's not. You don't just forget what someone's done and just say thank them because they did something else that was good. No. I mean, I think if someone legitimately stops a nuke, <laughs> you probably do thank them for that, regardless. I mean, you, don't you, have can to th- back, you can go back to being angry at them immediately after, but... You do not have to... Th- them. You don't have to thank them. You can feel conflicted about it, because his existence meant that you're still alive, but you don't have to thank him for it. Fine, but I did not get any sense of conflict from her in this. <laughs> It's such an alien concept to her, though. She just heard about it. Later. It was like, oh, evacuation. Like, she doesn't know how close they came to actually blowing up. She has no idea. I mean, he admits that he was there. He found the nuke. It's like, okay, just to process that and have okay, it was real. <laughs> That's, you know, that, that is not that hard to process. It was real, but she didn't know how, how, how close it came. But it's still like, okay, she she's heard that it's real. She didn't see it. She didn't feel it. It's just a thing. You, you, you can hear about a nuke being somewhere, but if it never went off, it's like, well, conceptually, it's just a thing that was there. It I don't think it hits you. It's, it's like when, something, when someone dies close to you, it doesn't quite hit you for a while because you don't really get the concept. It's like, you hear about it, but it's such a big thing to process that you're just like, well, I can't even comp- comprehend that. I can't believe I'm debating this scene this much. This is such a weird complaint to be. She was not thankful enough that he helped stop a nuke. I'm not saying it had to be a big thing. <laughs> I'm just saying the fact that she immediately went to her cause, you know, and was like kicking him out. Just a small moment of, like I said, you know, being conflicted. A moment of that would have really just alleviated no, this problem. I, I, I buy that she can't really process and comprehend that in, in a way that you're so coldly saying logically she should be thankful for this. I'm saying, I, I mean, seriously, someone stops a nuke, you thank them. That's just the rules. <laughs> no, you're boiling this down to be far too simple. She, she's she been sitting there waiting for him to come home so she can confront him and kick him out, right? That's all she's had in her mind all day. She wants to go through with that, so she doesn't want anything to distract her. So even though she hears this big news, she can't, she's like, no, I'm not processing that right now. I am getting going through with this because this is what I came here to do. This is why I've been sitting here waiting, right? This scene makes complete sense to me. Yeah, I got, like I said, some being conflicted for the help. I I think there's a, 
It's not that you're not a bit empathetic towards her generally, but I think there's a complete lack of empathy to how she's it, processing this, this information. This is, this is literally the first time <laughs> where I've just gone, just take a moment. No, no. No gratitude here. I, 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 team Cat on this scene, quite frankly. Team Cat. I, I am glad he just chose to give up and leave when he did because it because you know obviously Max not typically creepy but it's getting creepy when he's with her. Right? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm glad he just chose to leave, uh, uh, and I like that you also see him lying on the couch later on. You know, at the at the garage, just yeah. just you know, it's, he's like, oh, that's where he's living now. <laughs> where else to go? That's three of them roommates. Mm. Phil, Phil, Marcy's not gonna stay at David's place, is she? Hmm. I don't see it. It depends. It depends. I can see her not wanting to. Cause I, can, be, I can see her not yeah. wanting to. I can also see her being like, oh, I want to live here because this was where, you know, this was his. This was, you know, it can go either way. It could, but the idea, okay, three of them are there now. If she's there, it was like, well, there's four of us. Might is, as well. Is there even enough rooms at the place for four of them? They'll find rooms. Uh, oh. I, I, can, nah, I can see her moving in with uh, Carly. I can see I can see the girls maybe. rooming. I can see the boys rooming. Yeah, maybe. I can see that maybe being a thing. Um, assuming we even get a season four, I mean, we're all, we've been very hopeful here. <laughs> we have we have faith in Netflix. Yes. It's not, yeah, they better. Yeah. They've not let us down yet. They've cancelled things we don't care about, and they've renewed things we do care about. They've not let us down as of yet. So this could be the first blow. It could be. It could be. Uh, anyway, what was I talking about? I right, so yeah, I was. Just, I just wanted to say that she kicked him out, and Connor set us down that path of absurdity. I'm sure someone in the comments will back me up. Ah. Uh, there always is, but that doesn't mean you're right. It just means there's two of you that are wrong. Uh, <laughs> Stop pretending you don't agree with me. It's just a waste of time. God damn it. Yes. I wish that line was never heard. <laughs> yes. Perfect use of it and everything. All right. So, <laughs> what else have we got? I mean, that's a, that's most of that's most of the things. I think that's probably yeah. all of it. Yeah. Yeah, but Pro- Protocol Omega. That's where we're leaving off. Get into the to the finale uh feels like things are heating up feels like the the you know the faction are so like being mysterious you know we see glimpses of them here or there but they're they're keeping them so close to the chest in terms of what they're actually up to which i think is smart because just like you know what body is zero zero one in you know like that part of it is really intriguing like they gave us the one episode where we saw zero zero one to know that they can now do this but it was like okay we're now who knows yeah I also like the idea that they've gotten much better at stopping whatever the the travelers are doing. That this I, this whole plan about nuking the, the archives, this has come because Zero Zero One is the leader now because he has enough. He knows enough about them to predict how to stop them. Yeah, no, yeah, no, definitely. It's a uh, interesting. Yeah, you have to wonder how much of the stuff may have been, you know, he had some influence on. Yeah, because he, he was Zero Zero One. He probably helped design a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he probably helped set up a few things. So it'd be very intriguing to see how they maybe combat this. Yeah. Um but yeah. Uh so so there you go. That is uh <laughs> that's Travelers episode nine. Uh so sorry. Do you, do you know what? Like I, I like that David wasn't travelled into. I I like that this death, of all the deaths that we could have, this one is just a real death. It's just that's it. Do you know what I, I would say as well is I wonder if we get a moment with Marcy where you know, you know, we had someone earlier in the season say, you know, uh, you know, the, the last words were, were robbed from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because, I don't know, you know, this person, you know, their, their loved one, it was, it was traveled, you know, not traveled, the message was, was beamed through them, and it's like, well, the last words weren't their own. Yeah. Now, Marcy should inherently be more understanding because, you know, she, she kind of expects this, and it's, I don't know, if this is the message that needs to be done, it's that desperate. Sure. But I do wonder if there is a moment of that she'll have of like no 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 maybe we still could have had time maybe there was. So it, it could have. All... I mean I think you have to trust the director sent the message when he did because it was yeah. right before he was going to die right and that's that's fine. Um, I I think though you could almost never actually have her say anything about this. I think we could almost just read that she feels that way anyway, and arguably that's why we had that scene, that that story with Yates. Yes, possibly. To, to to give us this in, this insight into how Marcy's feeling right now. Yeah, I think a lot of it will depend on you know what we see context, yeah. obviously. But it's just something to to yeah. that'll be keeping in the back of my mind. But even even if they never even if she never says anything, even if they never make a point of showing this, I can still kind of just because we get shown this earlier on the season, 
assume that that's in her mind and it's, it's weighing yeah. on her in some capacity as we go forward in yeah. the next episode so uh so you know uh so you know, death feels real and it, you know because th- this show even though there's been real deaths because we have travelers like taking over the bodies so you know jeff did die right and we have yeah but i didn't give a shit about jeff sure but no but i'm using this as an example of jeff did die but we keep the actor around we keep you know someone who looks like him around um I, I do actually want to compare it to the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer because in that show, whenever a death came from a magic based thing or a demon or something like that, the role in the writer's room was that they could come back, right? You could reverse magical things. But if a death was from natural causes or it was from, say, a gunshot, you know, something that was realistic, it would stick. And there's a big death in Buffy's uh, fifth season where it was one of the first ones that felt like no this was just a real death like there's no going back from this there, there's no trickery there's nothing we can do to stop this yeah, and, and david kind of has that feeling here where there's just no that that's it it's just a real death no no countdown timer no nothing just it's, yeah it's, even even when it was a uh, you know trevor a few episodes ago and we said you know this will feel like a death even though you know we'll mm. keep the actor around if, if it had gone through with, with that plan uh, but this is uh, it's a different level isn't it yeah so yeah. it's a, not only is the character dead but he's not even symbolically still around in the, yeah. in the way that some other characters are so. well i remember the other moment that terrified me briefly is oh. when it started, comes up saying you know, uh time of explosion yeah and just, but it's just the you know it's the mac a couple of them are in the in the in the bunker right mm. and it's the letters start coming in that scrambled effect that it does before it before it said explosion before it said it, yeah, yeah and i was like I oh my mean. god what's going on who yeah. is it who's, who's dying yeah just for like half a second my heart started pounding yeah it's like no no no, 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 no. we're dealing with david don't do this now <laughs> yeah no uh so there you go that's travels episode nine we have one episode left we have the finale it'll be here the day after tomorrow so you can look for it there i said today after tomorrow i meant the day after tomorrow that was probably obvious but i'll just i'll clarify it just in case uh, so let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below like subscribe all that stuff get us on the, the the twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates if you want to support the channel and the show and all of our discussions and what we do here and keep them coming you can have it at patreon.com slash mailfuzztv and you can do that over there for as little as a dollar per month uh, but that is us so thank you once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla